Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm going grave robbing. So of course, when I talk about going grave robbing, I'm not talking about digging anything up. What I'm talking about is old dead electronics that you aren't using anymore, but who might have useful parts for you to use in your other projects. In this video, I'm gonna show you uh, what usable parts I can get off of a couple old computers that I have laying around, show you how to desolder a lot of the things off a motherboard from an old computer in order to use those capacitors, switches, batteries, all sorts of things in other projects down the road. Check it out. The first thing you want to do is plug in your soldering iron as you want it to be nice and hot for all the components that you're going to remove. Secondly, you're going to find your piece of electronics. Here I'm using a motherboard from a computer, but pretty much anything would work. Anything from a VCR, uh, any other kind of appliance, anything with a, a circuit board will have usable parts that you can remove. Next thing I'm going to do is mark out the components that I want with a Sharpie. And the reason for that is so that it's not confusing to what components you're trying to get off when you actually start soldering. When you're ready to remove components, you build up uh, a little bit of solder in the puddle and then you use that puddle to melt away the coating that's on top of the printed circuit board and give you access to the component terminals itself. You can tell when you burn the coating away because the terminals of the component become shiny and, and you can see that uh, there's actually solder sticking to it. After you've done that, all you need to do is keep working away, rocking the component back and forth as you heat the solder and that'll allow the component to come free of the board and be able to remove it. Here you can see the first capacitor down. When you first start off, this will be a very awkward process, but the more times that you do it, you'll begin to uh, become more efficient at it. You'll understand how much heat to use and also how much solder you need in order to make a nice little puddle and free those terminals from the solder. See, the second one's a little bit faster, and just as you go, you'll just develop a bit of a knack for it as you go actually quite fun as you release components the board becomes emptier and your little pile of parts becomes bigger the items that I identified on this motherboard were capacitors the battery holder the some of the connectors for the power supply anything that can be useful to you in another project and it depends of course on what kind of projects you do but it's always helpful to have uh, an assortment of parts that you can dig through when you're looking for something special Here's the connector from uh, the CD-ROM player. Often you'll find things like a little piezo uh, or other uh, sound devices. You'll find different clips, different connectors. Here's the battery terminal now. And there it is for the coin cell battery. I had a second motherboard from another computer and here I'm just going to do the same kind of thing. I've marked out what components I want and I'm just gonna go around removing different things till I've got a pile of parts that I'm looking for. Of course, you're working with something hot, so you want to be careful that you're not going to burn yourself. And you also, uh, you know, if you can work in a very well ventilated area, as there are some fumes that go with soldering. Taking apart a CD-ROM player can also harvest you some neat components, uh, especially a few motors. And you're going to see here as I pop this one apart, there's a motor that opens and closes the drawer. There's also a motor inside that spins the disc and then a motor that controls the movement of the laser on rails inside. And all three of those can be harvested as well as the laser itself.
here you can see all the components that I've collected from a couple motherboards and also uh, the case fan, laser, and a couple of power supplies. Here you can see from the legend of the power supply that you get 5 volts, 3.3 volts, and 12 volts from a standard ATX power supply. So I hope you see how easy it is with a soldering iron and a little bit of time to harvest components for your own projects. Things like motors, LEDs, capacitors, switches, all sorts of things are available and they really do save time and money from having to order things in and wait for them to arrive when you have them right under your uh, fingers. You could even use the laser from a CD-ROM to make your very own laser writer to engrave things on wood or metal. So if you like the videos that we're making, please consider subscribing. Tell your friends and family, creative people in your life, there's a new DIY channel around. And until next time in all your DIY projects, don't be afraid to be balder.